In this example, I'm going to show you how to paint a fir tree, not using dry brushwork, but very much a wet into wet technique. You can see that I've drawn a basic outline for the tree with just a few pencil marks. You don't want too much detail. You need to find your way and find the shape of the tree with the brush. But the very first thing to do is to put some masking fluid on the trunk. I've got a very fine masking fluid brush so as I don't make the trunk too wide. And I'm not painting it all the way up. The idea with this one is that between the foliage, where there's a little bit more light, you glimpse bits of the trunk here and there. While the masking fluid's drying, I'm going to mix some colours. I've got a number eight brush and I'm going to take some Viridian. A really thick, strong mixture, but I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to it, which darkens it, makes it more of a bluey green. And then I'm going to calm that down with a bit of burnt sienna. I need a bit of colour for the sky, for a simple background. So I've got a number 10 brush uh, and just a thin wash of cobalt blue will be fine for this. I've now got a natural sponge charged up with clean water. I'm just going to wet the whole of the background behind the tree. So I'll wet the whole of the background with clean water. Don't leave any dry areas, make sure it's nice and thoroughly wet. But not, not a puddle, not dripping in water, just a nice even coating. The whole idea of the masking fluid is that you can do this without trying to paint around the trunk. You just ignore that and wet right across it. And then I've got that number 10 brush, which has got the cobalt blue on it, the thin wash, just to put a bit of shape in for the sky and just float a bit of that in. Try and leave a few white spaces to suggest some cloud, just to give us a, a background so that we're not looking at white paper between the foliage and the branches. Now, timing's crucial to this. So straight away now, I'm going to the number eight brush, which is full of that rich, dark green. And I'm going to be tentative at first. I'm going to touch the brush to the paper and see what happens. If it spreads too quickly, it, it means I need to wait a moment. If it just softens nicely into the background like that, I think the timing is about right now. Soft, almost spidery look to the foliage at the ends of the branches there by letting the paint soften into the background. This is why your dark green has to be quite thick or it will just run away like mad and when it dries it will be too pale. In general, these shapes for the branches get a little bit wider and a bit bigger towards the base of the tree. Very important that your brush has a good fine point to it, using the very tip of the brush at the top, a bit more strength into that dark green lower down, I think. I'm going to get a number two detailer brush, get a touch of lemon yellow on it. And so that that dark green isn't too flat, I'm going to put a few highlights in. Because lemon yellow is a semi-opaque colour, you can use it against a dark and it will still have an effect. So we'll just try this out, just a few little dabs of the lemon yellow to create a few highlights. And it's fairly thick, it's almost neat, that lemon yellow. You may need a touch of water to make it more workable. And then just a bit more of that rich dark green, just to maybe pick out a few fine points towards the edge of the foliage. Remember that watercolour paint always dries lighter, so as this is drying, it's not looking quite as strong as it was, and that's why I'm using a bit of dark on this number two brush to just strengthen it up in one or two places. Now that all that foliage is dry, I'm just going to remove the masking fluid, which just gives us those glimpses of pure white paper. Now with the number two brush, I'm going to mix some colour for the tree trunk. A little bit of uh, light brown colour, some raw sienna and burnt sienna. And for the shadow side of the trunk, a rich dark brown, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So starting with the lighter colour, the raw sienna and burnt sienna, the light's coming from the right hand side. So the light colour is on the right of the trunk. and the dark colour, which you have to paint in straight away so that it, it softens in and looks cylindrical, that's on the left-hand side of the trunk. That's the raw sienna and burnt sienna, following that up through the gap there. Now, where the trunk meets the dark green, that can look a bit false at the moment because you get, it comes to a dead end where the colours meet. So I've still got the number two brush and I'm going back in with a little bit of the dark green to soften the previously painted foliage into the tree trunk. You'll notice I haven't painted the whole trunk. That's because 
In order to get the light and dark to soften into each other, you have to put them on while they're still wet. If you go right to the top with the light colour, when you come back to the dark, the light one's dried and they don't blend, they don't mix. So we can now finish the job by going right up to the top and then for the left hand side, just like earlier on, the burnt sienna and ultramarine in. Uh, there's one or two areas between all the foliage where you get the glimpse of very fine branches. So still with this number two detailer brush, we can just pick one or two of those out, not too many. You just glimpse in there now and again. Just describes to the viewer the branches that are supporting all this greenery. And at the top there, I'm going back in with some rich dark green just to soften it and give you that now you see it, now you don't effect with the trunks and branches. Just to finish this off and give it a setting, I've got a number six brush. I'm going to take a bit of uh, lemon yellow, add a bit of cobalt blue to it and a little touch of raw sienna, make a sort of olive green colour. And then with the rich dark green, remember the light's coming from the right, so from the left of the tree, going towards the left, we'll have a suggestion of shadow across the grass. And that's completed. In this tip I'm going to show you how to depict nice rich autumn foliage using a natural sponge rather than a brush. I've started out by drawing the tree, again just indicating the trunk and a few branches. I've put a little bit of masking fluid on the trunk before wetting the whole of the background and dropping in a bit of cobalt blue to suggest a sky. I'm now going to take a number 10 brush and mix a variety of autumn colours. I'm going to start with Oriolin and to make that into a, a warm autumn gold colour I'm going to add burnt sienna to it. I never use orange out of a tube, I find that is a very good combination. I want now a slightly richer, redder version of that, so I'm going to take raw sienna and add burnt sienna to it. A bit more burnt sienna this time so it goes redder. Natural sponge is very thirsty, when you, you start dipping the sponge in the paint, you'll find it just absorbs it all in no time. I think we'll take now a little bit of lemon yellow. And for a darker side of the tree, I'm going to mix a chocolatey brown colour with burnt sienna and ultramarine. The ultramarine kills off the red in the burnt sienna and gives you a nice rich dark brown. Okay, so I'm now going to take the natural sponge, wash it out and then squeeze most of the water out of it. And I'm starting with the lighter colour. This is the mixture of oriolin and burnt sienna. And a light touch is what you need with this. If you press on too hard, you don't get any gaps between the little marks you're making and it, it looks very solid and like a big blob. So just gradually building up that, that tree shape. Let's try a bit of the, the red now. This is the burnt sienna with raw sienna. Again, a light touch. You can always add a bit more, but if you press on too much, you can't get rid of it. Well, that gives us a basic shape, a basic outline for the tree. Get a bit more over to the left hand side, I think. And then I'm going to clean the sponge out. And we'll have the light coming from the right hand side so that I use the darker mixture. This is the brown made with burnt sienna and ultramarine. And I use that more over to the, the left. And then I'm cleaning the sponge again, squeezing it out so it's just damp. And I just need, I think, to get a bit more of that lemon yellow, a few highlights, a bit more brighter colour amongst it. Okay, now that needs a bit of time to dry before we can put the trunks and branches in. So I'm going to just take a number four brush uh, and mix a colour for the light side of the trunk. Raw sienna with a little touch of burnt sienna in it, starting from the ground upwards, bearing in mind the light's coming from the right hand side and straight away before that dries I've got some more of that rich dark brown burnt sienna and ultramarine 
which I mixed for the foliage earlier on. The idea is to paint the, the dark side of the trunk in and as we get higher, start to lose sight of the branches, just glimpsing them now and again in gaps between the foliage. Now I'm going to continue this with the detailer brush, the really fine point, the smallest brush in the collection. It will help me to ensure that these branches do get thinner and thinner. Try and look amongst the foliage that you did earlier on for little gaps where you can see the sky through it. That's where you should be putting these indications of fine branches. Just You can see how this forms the shape. Doesn't the foliage look different now that it's got a few branches visible in the gaps? Just a touch more around there. And I'm going to take some more of that Oriole in. Just a touch of cobalt blue with it. Make a nice rich green. And we'll put a bit of grass in around the base of the tree. Before I just remind myself of the direction of the shadow. A bit of the dark brown will be okay for the shadow. Just from the base of the trunk going off towards the left hand side there. And that's completed. Well, that's the end of this programme, but I hope you'll join me next time for some more watercolour landscape top tips. <laughs>